I want to start with congratulations. I watched your series. I know I'm not supposed to ask about certain things, so I'll be very, <laughs> I'll be very guarded as I say this. But uh, the thing about this series is it's definitely unlike anything else that I've seen. Right. And I'm curious if that's what drew you both to this material. Yeah, that's what we've both been saying, that we'd kind of been through lockdown and seen various versions of all the stories on streamers. And this felt like, wow, this is a love story, but it's got, you know, so many other elements without any spoilers. And it's such a, a mash of genres, but ultimately it's a, a it's an adult love story, which I feel like I personally don't get an opportunity to read many adult stories. They're often, you know, I don't know. I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed reading it. I enjoyed, you know, researching the director and what a fun, wonderful storyteller he was. And I've always wanted to work with Josh and it's a fantastic yep. character for me. So it was all, uh, all the boxes got ticked. Similarly for me, having worked with Abe on Little Monsters, I sort of knew how he likes to take to different tones mm -hmm. and different genres and smash them together. And I love that challenge. Uh, you know, every time he does it, he does it to such unique effect where it, it feels like unlike anything else I've seen in any of those spaces. And this is a love story unlike any other. This is very unique and different and very unexpected. I agree with that. It's very hard to not say. Uh, yeah. Um, did she mention <laughs> anything to you about this when you were making Little Monsters and Asterix? If you've never seen Little Monsters, you really need to see it. The movie's oh. fantastic. Thank you, man. Uh, no, this came out of nowhere. Isla and I, during the pandemic, were actually talking about doing another project, this, this rom-com that was really interesting. And this sort of fell into my lap um, with like a month before cameras were going to start rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got the scripts and was like, wait, what? Um, you want me to drop my everything in the midst of a pandemic and go to Australia? I don't know if I'm up for it. And I read the scripts, knew Isla was in it and said, oh, just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in and went. And it was uh, worth every minute because it, it was truly an extraordinary process and I couldn't be prouder of, of the work. I know that every actor likes to work a different way. Some people like it to be energized on set. Others are very much in their head. For both of you, do you have a similar work process? Like a Yes, we have the same work process. We do. And so there was absolutely, uh, there, it, that was what put, it was so comfortable right away. Uh, we both enjoy making jokes between takes. We're very serious about our work. I mean, I'll speak myself. I'm very serious about my work. I do my research. I put as many hours as possible. Once I'm performing though, I like the atmosphere on set to be just very, fun and light and you do too and I think it was nice not to be kind of shushed or like it was just nice we just we really made jokes between we'd be crying in a scene and then right they yell cut and we're able to laugh we again. we have the same language yeah it, like we we do we share sort of the same brain mm -hmm. and it was especially in a show like this that requires so many different things at all times it's nice to decompress and just laugh about the day yeah um and that was really, really great. My favorite experience shooting was we had this love, this this scene in episode two where we have to essentially fall in love with each other. And um, we were both so sick. Yeah. Like, I mean, just like a caricature of sickness. <laughs> and we, we were it's on set not, hawking up our lungs, like snotty and like no COVID, but still like really bad colds. And it was just such a pivotal scene. And we were able to get through it because we just had each other's backs. And despite the fact that we were feeling like garbage, it was just a prime example of how effortless the experience was yeah, of, of this it truly collaboration. Was. It truly was. We just, we naturally, and Josh is just one of those scene partners. He doesn't, he is just not competitive. He's there for everyone oh. to win. Every other actor, everyone on set, he knows their name. He cares about the process as much as a result. And so the journey is as great as the destination with Josh. One of the things that must've been cool for both of you is that Abe wrote and directed all the scripts, all the episodes, mm -hmm. and you're not having like multiple people's visions and voices sort of mm -hmm. coming in, but what, was he very precious with all the lines on set? How much, like, you know what I mean? Like, was he watching the commas or was he sort of like, I want you to make these characters your own? No, he wants, I, I think he's very collaborative in that he definitely in the beginning process. Yes. I think he, I think very open to, I think with this script, with these scripts, 
it wasn't a preciousness. It was a desire. Specificity. It was a specificity. That's a great word. It was a specificity about like the intentions and have the to be this way. exposition was set up because it paid off in certain episodes. You couldn't really play around with the language because you, everything, it was there for a reason. So the real estate was quite tight. You didn't yeah. want to like blow anything. But I would say he's definitely a director who has a strong idea of the characters in his head. Yes. And you definitely, which I really enjoy. I love being directed. Um, so I really loved all of his input. And uh, I was constantly able to annoy him at all times. <laughs> <laughs> and he never seemed to complain. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to ruin anything, but at some point there are revelations in this series Yes. And I'm just in, and, and oh, man, how can I say this? What was your reaction <laughs> when you saw the revelations and what Abe was putting on screen? Loved, I loved, I'm, I, you know, love the way he tackles it in an old school way. Um, and there's just, you know, again, I don't want to get into to any details, but there's, you have to have a certain confidence to tell a story like this and not blink, not flinch. And that's Abe is yeah he's courageous he's courageous he had a vision from the beginning yeah and the execution of that vision is just him pouring his heart and soul into you know doing something so unexpected yeah. and so crazy and yet it's all set up in a beautiful way and it all works I think in a way that he sticks the landing. Uh, I'm curious if he said anything to you assuming that the show is a hit. Um, about future seasons and where it might go. Have you had those conversations with him about what we he envisioned? We have, but we, we have. given on our talking points. Yes, we, we can't really talk on about any of it. points, we're not supposed to say. Yes, but, but, but look, <laughs> if, if audiences, you hope with anything, audiences yeah. will yeah. embrace. And, and if, if they do, I think that there's always more story to be told with such rich characters. And also just, I would love to work with Josh and Abe again. I would feel completely... Uh, disappointed if we don't get to work together again. Um, before I run out of time, I just want to, as Josh knows, I'm a huge fan of Central Park, um, which is on a competing streamer, but I want to know where you are uh, at in the production. What can you tease people? Just finished season three. Uh, the second part of season two is going to premiere very soon. I can't give the date away yet, uh, but season three, which we are in the midst of going into post-production on is the best season of television I've ever been a part of in terms of storytelling. Our, our showrunners, uh, Kelvin and Steven have up the ante and we are. Hey, I, hey, I, hey, we're here to sell Wolf un, like me. Uh, unlike Wolf, Wolf like me, me in an animated space. Um, <laughs> and, and I think people are going to be blown away by the music, by the story, by the characters it's other than Wolf Like Me, the, the best, uh, oh, the no, best it season is. of television. Josh ever. got me hooked on it. He was like, watch my show. I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't know it existed. And then I was like straight in. I, my question for you is how come he hasn't put you on the series yet? Or have you I been added? Sing. I can't sing, unfortunately. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um, she said, I don't want to do that because I don't like to sing. <laughs> I don't like to open my I mind. just like to be a fan and watch. Yeah. I'm going to be from the. They don't have recording booths in Perth. <laughs> right yeah exactly which is where um, we are right now yeah are, are you really no it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like wow the time but anyway um, my, my, my last thing for both of you obviously this series will not work without the the, the i don't know the actor's name i apologize the ariel person, yeah ariel? Um, yeah exactly um can you sort of talk a little bit about working with her because she is integral in making all of this work if you don't buy into her performance She's a revelation. I, I, she's also a very special kid. Yeah. She has a, she has. She's like a magical unicorn. Yes. She has a, a wiseness beyond her years. Yeah. I, there was only one other time where I ever worked with a, a young would be leading lady where I ever felt this way. And that was Emma Stone when we did the rocker, where it was just like, there's something very different about you. You're you are otherworldly otherworldly she's present in a in a in a in a she's present and grounded in every moment and she just it's she's phenomenal yeah on that note i gotta stop i'm just gonna say i really am looking forward to people talking about this and being able to talk about this thank you for giving me your time great um, to see you Stephen. as always see you. later